and we don't want you to enjoy this night on an empty stomach. So again, if you didn't grab popcorn, there's lots out there. There's also hot chocolate and a bunch of drinks out there as well. Absolutely. I love Christmas. You love Christmas. Woo! Woo! The lights, the music, the smell, the food, mm -hmm. and of course, the message. Yes, and I know that you love lights, Pastor Charles, because if you've seen the front of his house, it kind of looks like Christmas grew up. And I mean that in the nicest way. Okay, so good thing I always come prepared with fun. So I have a couple different options. So we'll do it by cheering or clapping or whatever. So, eating candy canes or drinking eggnog? Who would rather eat candy canes? What about drink eggnog? I don't get you, but okay. I don't have to understand. Okay, what about, okay, building a gingerbread house or baking cookies? Building a gingerbread house. Baking cookies? <laughs> okay, the cookies taste way better. I don't really like gingerbread houses. Okay, so having Frosty the Snowman as your friend or Rudolph as your friend? Frosty. Okay, what about Frosty? Anybody Yay. want Frosty?
everyone. I have the privilege of doing the third Advent reading for Sunday. What an exciting passage. It's found in Luke and shifts our attention to the mother of the promised Messiah. Let's read from Luke 1, starting at verse 26. One month later, God sent the angel Gabriel to the town of Nazareth in Galilee with a message for a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to Joseph from the family of King David. The angel greeted Mary and said, You are truly blessed. The Lord is with you. Mary was confused by the angel's words and wondered what they meant. Then the angel told Mary, Don't be afraid. God is pleased with you and you will have a son. His name will be Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of God Most High. The Lord God will make him king as his ancestor David was. He will rule the people of Israel forever and his kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, How can this happen? I am not married. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come down to you and God's power will come over you. So your child will be called the Holy Son of God. Your relative Elizabeth is also going to have a son, even though she is old. No one thought she could ever have a baby, but in three months she will have a son. Nothing is impossible with God. Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it happen as you have said. And the angel left her. A few verses later, we have Mary's song of praise. Mary said, With all my heart I praise the Lord, and I am glad because of God my Savior. God cares for me, his humble servant. From now on, all people will say, God has blessed me. God, all-powerful, has done great things for me, and his name is holy. He always shows mercy to everyone who worships him. The Lord has used his powerful arm to scatter those who are proud. God drags strong rulers from their thrones and puts humble people in places of power. God gives the hungry good things to eat and sends the rich away with nothing. God helps his servant Israel and is always merciful to his people. The Lord made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his family forever.
everybody.
Hello everyone, this is Harpreet Sibia and this is going to be a third advent and I'm going to read Isaiah 35, 1 to 4. Number 1. Even the wilderness and desert will be glad in those days. The wasteland will rejoice and blossom with spring crocuses. Number 2. Yes, there will be an abundance of flowers and singing and joy. The desert will become an, as green as mountains of Lebanon as lovely as Mount Caramel or the plain of Sharon. There the Lord will display his glory, the splendor of our God. Number third, with this news strengthen those who have tired hands and encourage those who have tired knees. Number four, say to those with grateful hearts, be strong and do not fear, for your God is coming to destroy your enemies. He is coming to save you. Merry Christmas to all. is a wonderful Christmas song. I think this year in particular, as I rock a baby of my own, I feel <laughs> a real connection to Mary and the whole nativity scene. I think this is part of the magic of Christmas. Through the, through the story of two young parents, we connect with the humanity of Christ. We see a small part in the big story, and it reminds us all that we are not alone. The rich and the poor, the shepherd and the king, we're all called family because of Jesus. This next song reminds us that to worship the newborn king is to care for one or, to care for one another, to pray and to serve, and to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Amen. Let there be peace, peace to every nation. Let there be hope for all.
During the Christmas season, we use this term Advent. And the word Advent means the arrival. And in our context, we talk about the arrival of Christ. And so each week during Advent, we, we light a different candle. And so we have two lit already, and we're in our third week. And so tonight, we light the candle of joy. In Luke's narrative, as was read by Hilda in the scriptures, Luke gives us these details that not a lot of the other gospel writers do. He clues us into who the angel was. He gives us these, these powerful statements that were made directly to Mary. The two statements are, the Lord is with you, and do not be afraid. But for Mary, she was afraid. When her interaction started with the angel, how could you not be? He had to say, do not be afraid. She had to move away from fear and eventually came to the place of joy. But put yourself in her shoes for just a moment. She had three different types of fear that had been pushing on her, personal, cultural, and I would say even political. For her personally, she was pregnant, unwed, her friends and family wouldn't have understood. This would have put pressure on her for her future, maybe her finances, maybe her plans that she had, and definitely with her fiancé. Culturally, there had been an incredible amount of shame for Mary, because wrapped together, you have you have culture and you have religion. And they didn't sit side by side, they were intermixed. They were very, very tightly wound together. So for Mary, someone who followed Yahweh, someone who followed after God, she would have publicly been seen as someone who was disregarding the laws of Moses and sinning against God. She was unclean. Even think about politically. So Mary, as the angel said to her, that your son will be the son of God. He will be the king of kings. Think about that for a second in her context. Jerusalem, the, the people of God, they are being over, overrun by the Roman rulers. Nero himself called himself the king of kings and the son of God. So if the angel is correct, then she is carrying a child who could throw the entire Roman rule into chaos. This would make her a traitor. This would make her someone who is marked for perhaps even death. So her life in one moment became intertwined with a divine conspiracy. But she chose joy. She didn't choose fear, she chose Joy. Now, spiritual joy is something very, very different than, let's say, even happiness. Happiness is probably the closest we can get to an understanding, but happiness is a very external thing. It is affected by the things that happen around us all the time. I can be happy that the weather is nice. I can be happy that the sun is shining. But the next day, when I step out into 40 below, I'm not so happy that happiness fleeted. Joy, on the other hand, is something that happens internally. It's something that cannot be pushed on by life's events. When we internalize joy, it is so much more than an emotion. It's a, an effect on our hearts as we have an outlook on life. Happiness is something that seeks after pleasure, but joy delights in sacrifice. Joy comes from a divine connection with God, much like what happened with Mary, but joy. We are in the middle of a series here at CT, a teaching series called the City of Angels, and you can see behind Lindsay this City of Angels logo. And we're talking about the different visitations that angels had with humanity leading up to 
the advent, to the arrival of Christ. Now, when Gabriel came to Mary and he spoke to her and says, do not be afraid, she took that to heart. She didn't let it pass by. She didn't, she didn't hold on to fear and just kind of nod. She took it to heart. She said, I will not be afraid. In the Bible itself, the term do not be afraid is listed 365 times. Do not be afraid. I encourage you tonight to give your heart permission to not be afraid. Give your heart permission to accept joy, to move a little bit further than you ever have been before. It's interesting that the angels, as they, they came to Zechariah, they came to Mary, they came to Joseph, they all preceded the advent of Christ. They came as forerunners, they came as messengers to prepare hearts for the actual arrival of Christ. Maybe tonight for you, you need to use tonight as a forerunner event to prepare your heart for this Christmas season, to prepare your heart to accept the joy of Christ in a way that you've never accepted it before. Happiness will pass away, but the joy that comes from our Lord, the joy that comes from our Savior cannot pass away. So tonight, I want you to give your heart permission to access that joy to access that, that peace that only can come from a Savior named Jesus. Amen.
an amazing night, and I know so much work has been done to, you know, pull this off. So great job to the choir, to the band, to the tech team, the food, the food, the pop art, the ushers, everyone. Thank you so much. A great, great job. And so yeah, they'll be handing those uh, baskets out. And we would love for you to know that a portion of the giving at this presentation tonight and at the one tomorrow morning will be <coughs> given uh, for the Westman traditional Christmas dinner. And it's a great opportunity to help those at Christmas who for several reasons just, you know, need help getting a Christmas meal. Absolutely, as well, we have some additional services coming up. And if you'd like to join us, we would love for you to do that next Sunday. We have Christmas Eve on December 24th at 6 p.m. That's a wonderful candlelit service for everyone as well. And then on Christmas Day, you're going to be online. So please feel free to join us there online on YouTube as well. And New Year's, same thing. And then on December the 8th, December, January. <laughs> CT Brandon, and if you'd like to keep in touch with us with what's going on, you know, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, all the socials by following CT Brandon. We'd like to say thank you for coming. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, and we hope that you leave here filled with hope and filled with the Christmas spirit. And one more question, Charles. Um, so, Christmas, what is your favorite part about the Christmas meal? My favorite part about the yeah. Christmas meal? All of it. Well, you said it was your favorite. The mashed potatoes, okay, the mashed, mashed potatoes, the swimming. Okay, but you have to make the mashed potato volcano. Right. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yes, salad. Well, okay. Well, I would agree as well. And so, do you know what? I think the choir has one more song for us. So, do you know what? Let's sing it with them. <laughs> 